I want to zoom in a little bit to concentration practice because that's what we are going to focus on today. And in a retreat, um, what we're going to do is really systematically give you the instructions. So you'll get pieces here and there so that they can build on each other and um, we can deepen together in a way that's not, that's piecemeal. So it doesn't, it doesn't have to be so overwhelming because sometimes if we get a lot of instructions and there's so many instructions out there, um, it can re we can really get into this place of like, well, what are we doing or what are we supposed to do and, and um, what's best right now? So for this retreat, I really want to invite you that you have your basket of practices, most of you do, and there is a systematic way of kind of building into the instructions. So I really invite you to do that. And today it's going to be concentration. Um, and I also wanted to bring forth once again, I've, I've brought her up before, Deepama. And it's really, she's really, really important in the Theravadan lineage um, in insight meditation in the Western um, culture. She studied, you know, she was one of the teachers of Jack Kornfield. She was one of my uh, and that Jack Cornwell is my teacher. So she's very um, embedded in um, the Western tradition. And here is her picture, Deepa Ma. I want to give a little bit of face to the name, those of you that don't know her. And she's been really supportive for me because, you know, I've done a lot of, of practice and, and I'm also a mom and there's nothing in my experience, more disempowering than to hear that I can't deepen or that um, I can't awaken or have insight, any of these things because I'm a mom or because I can't sit as much as other people sit or um, whatever these things are. It's just like, no thanks, <laughs> that's old. Um, we're somewhere new now. Um, so she, you know, one of her things is she did go and study in monasteries and she was super hardcore. She, she really practiced a lot. And then at one point she realized that, you know, awakening the universal, it's independent of causes and conditions. So, you know, it doesn't really matter if you're in a retreat or a monastery environment, if it's independent of conditions, this practice can be brought into anything and we can do it in everything. So she taught that way. She taught so many moms. She taught so many people that couldn't go off in the monasteries. And people started waking up and really um, seeing the practice come to life um, in their daily life. Um, here's something from this book. Um, she And this wasn't written by Deepa Ma. It was written by someone that kind of pulled together all her stories. But she said, presenting tough but effective lessons for people who wanted to meditate in the midst of their busy lives as householders Deepa Ma taught her students to use every moment as an opportunity for practice. Mindfulness, she said, could be applied to every activity, speaking, ironing, cooking, shopping, caring for children. The whole path of mindfulness, she repeated tirelessly, is this, whatever you are doing, be aware of it. Deepa Ma had so much faith in the power of practice amid the hubbub of home life that her one that one admirer dubbed her the patron saint of householders. When asked about the difference between formal meditation practice and daily life, she adamantly insisted, "You cannot separate meditation from life." She adamantly insisted, like insisted that, and she may have been one of the very beginning people to actually um, be the pioneers of this mindfulness and daily life movement. Um, that we can wake up and practice no matter what we're doing. Nursing kit, you know, nursing babies, um, you know, doing the dishes. And you can just see, like check in with yourself right now and just see what happens when I say this. Do you believe it? Is there that little birdie on your shoulder kind of doubting you saying, yeah, I don't know about this. I don't know about this. Um, because it, this is um, important to soften around, to really leave room for, um, for our life to be it, okay? For our life to be it. So as we go forth today, we're gonna to be working on cultivating concentration. And that's one um, factor of mindfulness, actually. It's one, one support for mindfulness. So concentration is, you know, bringing your attention back consciously with an intention, intention, to bring your attention 
back to a particular object. So you're resting your attention with the object of your choice. Um, of course, the breath is where I'm going to incline people to gradually, if you're not already there, which is fine, to gradually start to come into being able to anchor with breathing. Um, sometimes that is not where you want to start with your practice, and that's okay. You might not want to start there um, today. If you don't want to start with breathing, you know, maybe you give yourself the intention to, by the end of the day, you know, I will have, you know, been able to be with the breath um, a couple minutes longer. You can start very simply. You know, we don't have to rush into this. There's no um, medal that you're going to win at the end of this. Um, it really is something that um, we are learning how our bodies, minds, and hearts work and, and what supports us into scaffolding into presence. And we can't do that without concentration. So another thing that, uh, that works for a lot of people, and a lot of people do it on formal retreats, is noticing hearing. So there's hearing, hearing, hearing is like this. And then maybe from there you could notice your breath. So maybe you start with hearing and then can scaffold into your breath. The aim being bringing your attention back to stabilize again and again and again. So two parts of it, directing and then connecting with whatever your object is. So as we develop concentration, part of that is becoming um, more grounded in the body, all right? So we're not trying to, you know, some people say like, feel it in the body, sense it in the body, get in your body. Where I'm just saying is like, see what you can do to stabilize and ground so that you can sense your body in the space that you're in, all right? So that might be your hand, in certain moments, like if you can just feel your hand, that's enough, all right? You can just feel your feet, that's enough. So I do recommend though for, you know, because we're building it and because the narrowing of choices helps build concentration, I do recommend picking something that you can go to. So you have your go-to move and then you have your go-to um, concentration object within your body and hearing is still within your body you still have to come to your ears and that sense point to hear so you're still connecting to a part of your body even if you're you know even if that's your object if your hands are an object that's fine if your feet are an object that's fine um, especially if things are getting intense and we are in a time where things are more anxious than usual usually there's more anxiety than normal um, right now in a pandemic. Um, and so therefore, just be really just kind with yourself of what might work for you. Um, and if you've been practicing with the breath for a long time, and that's just like, that's just home base for you no matter what. And of course, continue to do that. So sometimes with concentration practice, um, and those of you that know mindfulness practice and more tools, there are more, more tools that you can use when things um, come. Like, you know, thoughts are going to be a big thing that comes today, all right? And as we settle in, we're also kind of, we're detoxing. So we're settling and we're detoxing. We're detoxing from the amount of technology that we usually do, more than likely, hopefully, you all have decided to 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 tone back the technology. So, um, you know, we're detoxing from that. We're detoxing from a lot of other outside stimulation that we normally are getting. Um, we are, if you've chosen to eat more healthy this week, you know, you're going to detox from sugar or whatever it is that you were chosen to do. Um, so just, just be, um, be sensitive to that, aware of that, that this is happening. This day is going to be difficult. It's part of the process. Um, and with that, know that there are certain kinds of techniques that you could use to support yourself. If you already know RAIN, which is recognize, accept, investigate, and nurture to deal with heavy emotions, you can do that. Just know that that is a different practice than concentration. What you might try today is just to see what happens when you just say no 
not right now. Just very simply, like, and gently, like you're actually working with the child. Like, this is my pointer right now is that you all are going to, in some ways, let's aim to be the best parent that you could imagine for yourself, all right? Because you, you're, you're adults, you know, your parents are not going to be telling you what to do. I'm not really telling you what to do. I'm helping facilitate and guide, but I'm not, I'm not your authority. Um, you are that. So for the best possible scenario in your ideal world, what kind of parent would you be? Um, so in some situations, you know, I have a four and a half year old, like some situations, it is a no, not right now. No, you're not going to eat those chocolate covered almonds right now. Dinner is in five minutes. Um, I don't say it really mean. It's just this matter of fact. No, not right now. All right. So when thoughts are coming, which they will, you can see for today if that'll work for you for a little bit. Um, just no, not right now. There are going to be more intense things that we'll need to work with in a different way. Concentration also does invite a process of what some in our wisdom traditions, um, some people call the process of purification. Um, in the Christian tradition, it's divine, um, the divine unloading. It's it's um, gonna when we are still and we're quiet and we aim towards clarity, then it's gonna our bodies are gonna start like a mattress. If you buy a new mattress, it off gases. That's kind of how I feel that we do when we start to do this practice is things are going to start to just try to move around and, and, and move through us because in a typical um, situation, we're not devoting this much attention to our experience. Um, so just be aware of that. The things are going to start to come off. They're going to start rumbling around. You're in a crucible and see if no, not right now in a gentle, kind way will work. If not, you can implore your mindfulness techniques, reign, recognize, accept, investigate, and non-identify, and I'll, I'll give more instructions on that later. But if you already know it, you can use it. Um, and then your go-to move. And then I'm gonna um, give you some instructions on concentration meditation. I am going to give some formal instructions on concentration meditation that we all will be doing together. But before I end this, I, I do want to just re-emphasize that concentration. We're coming back to a point in our bodies over and over and over again today. And that also means when you're in movement. All right. So you are really going to start to pay attention and bring, um, consciousness to um, all kinds of different paradoxes in our experience and as we practice we become more familiar with paradoxes and they're not so mind-boggling they're not so like confusing to a certain part of us and one of those is stillness and movement there can be stillness and movement sometimes you might have experienced this if you're a runner and you get concentrated and you're running and all the thoughts drop away and it's really still and but you're moving and it's like whoa um, that can happen in a sitting practice um, that can happen with dishes so that can happen with cooking so if you're chopping vegetables I mean that is great time to just like okay so with the pressure as you're chopping vegetables, the pressure on your hand as you're chopping, you're still hearing the sound as you're chopping, just bringing your attention back to that moment, to the physical sensations. Maybe you can notice your breath as you're chopping. That's all you're doing, noticing what it's like right now as it's happening. And this has been happening throughout thousands of years. All right, we have a lot of accounts written down um, by a particular, um, by a particular kind of person, you know, a particular kind of flavor of person. Um, a lot of people we would look back and say, okay, there's a lot of people that were self-identified as a man, you know, in a masculine body with a masculine orientation, very analytical style. We have a lot of documentations of those accounts with concentration practice. We don't have so many documentations of concentration practice from the feminine people that would identify as women's perspective. You cannot tell me, no, 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 that that had that we have we don't have this 
that's already here. Um, women did it, you know, um, washing their clothes together, singing songs together, knitting, crocheting, um, cooking. These things, concentration and awakening experience has happened in daily life. Um, throughout time, we are just now starting to bring this to the forefront and say, no, 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 let's do this together and let's do this in different ways and let's be conscious about it. It doesn't need to look a certain way. Um, and concentration will build if you just keep at it. That's the important part. You keep at it, you keep at it, you keep at it. Even the frustration, you, you just keep at it, all right? Relax, breathe, come back, all right?